everybody. Welcome into First Take on this Friday Eve. You gotta trademark that. I, I love Friday Eve. What's up? What's up? How are we doing? What's going on? Good to be back. Stephen Good A. to be back. Good to see I've you. been Max going for the Kellerman. last couple of days. You know, working. I, I, listen, I just want y'all to know, I know y'all missed me. Mm. I'm here. I'm here. I just wanted to make sure. I mean, make sure y'all knew that. All right. You know, there's no need to shed Absence any more tears. I am here. I am here. I did miss you. How do you like that? I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Let's move on. Now we're getting a little bit too emotional. Let's go. <laughs> Coming up, can Tom Brady still win MVP after missing the first four games due to suspension? Don't miss that debate a little later in the show. But we start with the rookies. Sunday in prime time, it's an NFC's battle when Carson Wentz and the Eagles face Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Wentz has led his team to a 4-2 and two record. Dak Prescott has the best total QBR at 84 while leading Dallas to a 5-1 and one record. Eagles receiver Jordan Matthews thinks the Wentz-Prescott matchup in the NFC East has a chance to develop into a quarterback rivalry of the ages like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. Max, Wentz or Prescott, who would you take as your franchise quarterback? The answer is Carson Wentz. And by the way, you don't have to take my word for it. Take every single talent evaluator in the NFL's word for it because all of them had Wentz ahead of Prescott. And they, a lot of them liked Prescott a lot. You hear them talking about it, including the Philadelphia Eagles. But they all preferred Wentz. They all did. And Wentz has done nothing to undermine their confidence in him, their faith that he would be an excellent quarterback. Wentz was like a Ben Roethlisberger, who in that draft with Eli and Phillip Rivers was from a smaller program, hadn't been seen as much. But, but all the evaluators said, whatever the stats say, we can look at this guy, Roethlisberger, and tell you he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. And some of the numbers on Wentz in college, how he did under pressure, doing fine in the NFL now, didn't always say the best thing. All the evaluators said the same thing. See that guy? We know an NFL quarterback when we see one, and that guy is an NFL quarterback. And what has he done? He hasn't been like Dak Prescott dropped into a situation behind clearly, and I would say by far, the best offensive line in football in a situation where they used a top pick on a running back to exploit that line in a situation where all he has to do and he's played very well Dak Prescott but don't turn the ball over you know protect the football and he's done a very good job you're going to have a very simple offense uh, not make you do too much and you got to stick to that game plan and that's a winning formula and it's worked take nothing away from him but that's not Carson Wentz the Philadelphia Eagles said we're going to get rid of our quarterback we are going to take you and we're going to build this franchise around you. And then even though the Eagles O-line isn't what the Cowboys is, he was so good that they were able to start him right away. And what has he done other than put himself in the running along with Dak as a rookie of the year? And in fact, be the guy. He's not just compared to Prescott, compared to Goff, where everyone's saying Goff still hasn't gotten on the field. Why wasn't Wentz the number one overall pick? The answer is Carson Wentz. I want to say this. Um, I want America to know that this is not my idea. I didn't want to broach this subject because I don't want to say anything uh, uh, complimentary about the Dallas Cowboys. I'm damn near allergic to saying anything about the Dallas Cowboys because I can't, I can't stand their fans. We know that. The only thing I like about the Dallas Cowboys is their cheerleaders. I'm not afraid to admit that part. Everything else, I'm not moved. Oh. But I will sit there and confess this to you. I will go with Dak Prescott. And the reason why I would go with Dak Prescott is because of the poise in that bubble that is the Dallas Cowboys, that circus kind of atmosphere that we have seen from the Dallas Cowboys throughout recent modern day history is a, another piece of distraction that Carson, uh, I'm sorry, that Dak Prescott has to walk into, but yet somehow, some way still, he manages to handle his business. I just look at Dak Prescott a little bit differently. I know the offensive line is formidable. I know having Ezekiel Elliott playing like an all pro is a very, very big thing. I know that alleviates some of the pressure that Dak Prescott has to deal with in comparison to Carson Wentz. But I also think that the all of that is offset by the circus-like atmosphere that comes associated with being a member of the Dallas Cowboys. Yet to be in that situation where he's under such pressure, he's under such a spotlight, where everything is going to be nitpicked, especially with Tony Romo out, 
uh, supposedly coming back when everybody and their grandmama knows that's who Jerry Jones wants to be his quarterback. He wants Tony Roman to come back. Matter of fact, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I'm not saying that Jerry Jones wishes anything malicious upon Dak Prescott. But if Dak Prescott was to tweak himself in some way and he was unable to come back to play a particular week while Tony Romo was available, nobody would be happier than Jerry Jones. There would be glee written all over him because that's who he is. That's his prodigal son, his adopted son. As far as I'm concerned, they should be, we should be checking with adoption agencies trying to find out when Jerry Jones actually adopted Tony Romo because that's how he is when it comes to Tony Romo with his pathetic self when it comes to Tony Romo. This is who he is. So Dak Prescott playing in the midst of that bubble under such duress, having to deal with all of that stuff and still having just one game, which was the first game where he completed less than 65% of his passes with the Dallas Cowboys on a five-game winning streak, with him scrambling out of the pocket, making throws under pressure, standing in the pocket, making throws under pressure, 15, 17 yards, 11 yards in third-down situations against the Redskins, what he's done against various other teams. I am simply saying that when you look at Dak Prescott, we can't definitively say anything about the number two overall pick against this fourth-round rookie. Because this fourth round rookie looks like he's going to make liars and fools out of a whole bunch of Look, people. It's way, it's way too early to say definitively, sure. period. Fair but enough. if you're asking me what my gut is, first of all, I like, I like Carson Wentz's big play ability actually more than I like Dax based on what I've seen so far. Okay. And you talk about the pressure of playing for the Dallas Cowboys. But in fact, I think it's very different. You worked in Philadelphia for many, many years. Yes, 17 years. Most well-known sports writer in Philadelphia after a while, I would say so. Okay, okay. Now, now would you go. say that the Philadelphia Eagles fans are a hate-based life form? Because I would. Eagles fans... I, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I want to make sure yes. I, you're careful. You're not saying that in a negative connotation, are you? I one of the greatest am. cities, one of the yes. greatest sports towns in, in American history, yeah. the city of Philadelphia. Sure. Are you being disrespectful but of, to Philadelphia? But of, no, How I, dare no, you? I think they How take dare it. You? No, I think they take it as a compliment to tell you the truth. The Eagles fans. The but I'm talking about what you mean. Love. I'm talking about what you yes. mean. What I'm saying is, Eagles fans are waiting for you to mess up. Like the Cowboys fans love the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. When you get a fourth round pick and he can perform, that's found money for your. That, the Cowboys fans are waiting to love the Cowboys. They're looking for excuses. You told them those delusional fan base. Eagles fans are the opposite. Even when things are going good, they're complaining about something about the team. And the Eagles mortgaged part of the future in draft picks and all this to reach for Carson Wentz. And yet he's performing well, so well, he's got those hate-based life fine. forms rooting for him. But Dak, of course, he has the love of the Cowboys. You're, 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 you're not wrong. The fourth-round pick performing for the Cowboys. You're not wrong, but you're missing something. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Carson Wentz era immediately succeeds the Chip Kelly era. And because of that, anything is a welcomed relief after that. I mean, when you saw what Chip Kelly did to this franchise, I'm sorry, you are relieved. And the fact that Sam Bradford, of course you wanted Carson Wentz because you were thinking coming into this season, there's but so much we were going to be able to do because the residue from the Chip Kelly era had so stained and sullied the franchise that anything that you did from, you know, it, that, 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 any kind of market improvement whatsoever was going to be some welcomed relief. So the expectations weren't really on Carson Wentz per se. Ah. It was on everything around how him they, because of what Chip Kelly did. But how did they make him the starter? What happened? Was it, They actually moved out a veteran quarterback. Who nobody believed in because he was there under Chip Kelly. Well, fine, and nobody liked fine, him last now year. Now that veteran quarterback is having success for right. an excellent team. You think there's not pressure on Carson? The pressure, my whole point is, as much as it seems like the pressure be on the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, in fact, in this case, the pressure is on the Eagles quarterback. His guy, Romo, gets hurt. The fourth round pick steps in and miraculously but, but, does amazing but, things. Carson Wentz, they move the guy to another team who's having great success and, and they reach for well, him. We're not talking There's pressure. More pressure we're we're, we're not talking pressure because, from a pressurized standpoint, I get where you're coming from. What I'm asking you to consider 
is the circus-like atmosphere that Prescott has to deal with. Pressure or no pressure, because it's the Dallas Cowboys, and because they're a walking piece of mediocrity in recent memory, and because they're the perpetual accident waiting to happen, because they got a owner, an owner in Jerry Jones, more concerned with hype than winning, more concerned with business and making dollars than winning. What you have is a situation that's right for a rookie to be exposed and, dare I say, overwhelmed by the totality of the situation. And we didn't even bring Romo into the equation. Carson Wentz doesn't have any of those issues. You got a new coach. You got a GM that was reinstalled because Howie Rosen was removed because Jeffrey Lurie gave all the power to Chip Kelly. Now that's been alleviated. So you have organizational structure with a rookie that we're bringing, we're allowing to be on the come up. We didn't know he was going to be this good, and we're happy about that. But the difference is he is in a very much more structured environment okay. than Prescott is, okay. which is why the rule for error that is there for Prescott. I don't think that outweighs the pressure that Wentz is facing based on my argument. And who would you rather be? What quarterback, what position would you rather be in? The quarterback with the best offensive line in the game and a great young running back who's so good, in fact, people are talking about him behind that offensive line being maybe the MVP, if not certainly a rookie of the year. Would you rather be that guy? What? There's always more pressure on the Cowboys. It's the Cowboys versus the Eagles. There's no. always more no. pressure just from the simple fact. Well, go it's ahead, Dallas Cowboys. Go ahead, Max. It's Max. America's answer, team. Max. Right. It's America. And but someone's coming for his job again. Is, the difference is in Dallas, they love you. If anything, you have to fight against the sense of entitlement because you're worshipped in Dallas. They want to love the Cowboys. That's why Stephen A. calls the fan base delusional. Any little bit of good news, they trumpet it. Yeah, 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 the yeah. Eagles oh, are wait the, a minute, wait a minute, is in the opposite but, but, but position. You're, but you're speaking from a macro perspective. Micro, speaking from a micro perspective, yes, they love the Cowboys, but at the same time, Tony Romo is waiting in the wings. And even though he has his critics and a lot of Cowboy fans who do not believe in him at all, you do have other fools who absolutely are in love with this man. There's treating more him eyes like on he's that got situation. two Super Bowls instead of two, two career playoff victories. Who would you rather so, be? Who would you, in what position would you rather be? Which quarterback would you rather play for me. the Cowboys tell behind me. that offensive line with those weapons? No, or no, the no, let me say this to you. You are right about it being the Cowboys, but for the wrong reasons. I would tell you that I would rather be with the Eagles if I had more receivers. The fact yes. that, hold on, talk about, I only have Jordan Matthews. You keep bringing up the offensive line. That, that's not the issue to me. The issue to me with the Eagles and Carson Wentz is that all he has is Jordan Matthews. Because Brenzel Exact Ertz haven't necessarily been selling this year, probably due to injury. Nelson Aguilar is still developing. But Beasley Cameron Williams Sproul. has been good, and now they get Des it's, it's, Bryant it's, it's, back, it's, it's, and they have Jason Witten. The point is, if they're performing on a similar level, and one guy is better <laughs> protected with more weapons, that yeah, suggests but you're thinking, the other but guy you're thinking, is better. But you're making the, the come on, come on. But you're work. making the football argument, and I'm going beyond that. I'm saying that Address the that no, no. I'm saying distraction off the field. You asked me in terms of what situation would I rather be in. I would rather be in a structured environment like that of the Philadelphia Eagles than with the Dallas Cowboys hype machine personified. More you know, eyeballs full of on that. Circumstances. Yes. That's the, well, that's More what I'm saying. More eyeballs on that. Where, Carson Wentz performing at least as well as Dak. And by the way, and, and by the way, and let me it's say this to you. Spot. Can I tell you something else too? And I'll say it. I said to all of those pathetic Dallas Cowboy fans out there, I said to the city of Dallas, because I would like to live in Dallas one day because there's no state income taxes. So I definitely, I would definitely take or that Florida. in consideration. But let me, or Florida, Tennessee's another option. I'm, Vegas, consider, yeah. I'm considering it all. <laughs> but let me tell you something right now. I think Philadelphia is a better sports town than Dallas. I believe that the city of Philadelphia is a better That's sports fair. town than Dallas, yeah, and sure. I would rather play in a better sports town. Well, a sports, town, a sports town that's actually more intense, more negative, looking for every flaw. That's the difference. The Eagles fans are looking for every flaw. The Cowboys fans are looking for the for the what, what, gold for the silver lining. Well, listen, and listen. You could call negative. You could call it negative all you want. I choose to assume that they are far more informed and realistic than Dallas Cowboy fans, and as a result, I don't look at the Philadelphia Just for the record, Eagles the as perpetually for negative. The the yes. I think it's a there's fantastic more sports town. There's more pressure town. on the there's more pressure two on over, Dak. Uh, there's more pressure on the number two overall pick that a team traded up for, no. or the fourth round pick. Which is there more pressure? 
Now the fourth, there's more pressure there's on more the fourth, fourth round pick. On number two. Okay. There's more pressure okay. on the fourth round pick, but he's in a better situation. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. more and I get, on the I get that. No. The second round there's, pick. No, there's, no, there's no, there's not more pressure on the fourth round pick right. than it is on the number two okay. overall pick. Right. But I'm just saying to you, all of America say, pays attention I, to all Dallas. All of America pays attention to Dallas, and Dallas is not. It's it's relatively dysfunctional. They're getting over this year. Good luck to them. But it's relatively yeah, dysfunctional. Just the cheerleaders. I, listen, listen. They are five and one. And I'm sitting here as a noted Dallas Cowboy hater with a smile on my face, waiting for the accident to happen. I know who the Cowboys are. They will not let me down. I'm telling you, they're going to find a way to mess it up. Cowboys you have a Super Bowl victory it. in their history, right? They have a Super Bowl. No, oh, Several. Oh, they have many. Several. Yeah. Uh, they have five actually all together. Several. Several. And and how many do the Eagles have? None. Okay. None. But there's hold on, wait a minute. Right. The second all round right. pick hold played on, for him. Right. Never won a Super Bowl. With no offensive line. Has, people like me. Right, has, people hold on, hold on. People like me that talk to the Cowboys. I'm not talking about Roger Starbuck and Tony Dorsett or Ed Tutol Jones or, or Ed Martin and them. I'm not talking about Emmitt Smith, Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, a playmaker. Uh, hell, those are my boys. I'm talking about the last 20 plus years. Let's be the honest. Dallas Cowboys, the Cowboys have been a, a joke. The Cowboys, and you know it. The Cowboys are a bigger deal than the Eagles because they have more fans nationwide. Because yes. they're, they're like, an out of market choice. But the intensity because of the got fans. Them on, yes, to, but just in Philly. You want to do it's only in Philly. Philly. got them on Thanksgiving. But it's playing. just in Philly. And by the he way, have the that's national an unfair country. advantage. I'm glad you brought that up because I see no reason why the Dallas Cowboys got to play every Thanksgiving. Who the hell? Uh, and it's not right. You know, a matter of fact, that's why the Eagles kick their butt every time they go up against them on Thanksgiving Day. You take, okay? you take Dak Prescott, I'll take Carson Wentz. You do that. You yeah, do that. Yeah, bet on you it. Can't that. wait for the end you of the season. That. I will not I forget can't believe this conversation. He got, he got me helping. He got me being supportive of a cowboy. And you were the hell is guy. this world coming? All right. You heard from these two, Max, on Team Wentz, Steven on Team Dak. Which quarterback do you want as your franchise guy? Go on Twitter and vote. We need someone to uh, figure this out for us who is right here.